Thank you very much for this introduction and for inviting me to be on, uh, on this uh, meeting uh, to honor God and to praise God for what he's done in my life and through my life. Uh, this is what it's all about, really. What we do is to serve and, 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 and give God glory for what, what he's done in our life and through our life in the past 26 years now that I've given my heart to Jesus. And what God have used me for in the Gaza Strip, in, uh, in the West Bank, in Israel, in uh, Middle East, part areas of the Middle East. Having been in, in the position that I have been with Yasser Arafat to, to uh, become eventually, before I came to the United States, as an assassin for Arafat. And I don't, I don't share this lightly. I am, I am ashamed for what I've done in my past and taking human lives. Uh, but that was what I've done, and that's my history. And, and the fact that God was willing to look at me and consider me in his service is humbling. It's humbling to me. And I don't take this very lightly. So thank you, Bill, and thank you, John and Alan and all those uh, brothers in, in, King, in uh, the UK. And uh, can I start by praying first? Father, I thank you, Lord, for this privilege that you have given me to, uh, to serve you among my brothers and my sisters. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege you've given me to, uh, to save me and to invite me to your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Lord, honor my brothers and my sisters, and, and uh, uh, build your kingdom through them as well, Lord. And we praise you and you thank you. We thank you for, for your kindness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We are living in a very, very special time in history. And what is happening in the United States and all over the world at this point of time with the, with the virus and all of that. Uh, it is really, uh, it, is, it is really more important time right now than ever in history before. I came to America in 1974 after living a, a bloody life back in the Middle East working for Yasser Arafat, and uh, at, the, at the last period of time, after the last mission of assassination that I did, I went to Yasser Arafat and I, I said to him, I, I just can't do this. I want to be back to be a fighter, to be a sniper, but I don't want to be an assassin anymore. I get to take a life of a human being that I know I get to study and know more than they know themselves. And, and I just can't do this. He looked at me and he said, young man, you are a natural born leader. You should go and, and, and study, get some more education. And maybe with that, you can, you can work for our cause, for the Palestinian cause with your brain instead of your weapons. And I was so excited about that. I said, thank you very much, sir. I am gonna do that right there. And so I went to the state of Qatar and I applied for a visa to come to the United States. Now. Having, getting a visa to the United States is a miracle by itself. I was on the wanted list by the Jordanian authorities, by the Israelis, by the Egyptian, by the Lebanese. I was, I tried to assassinate the Crown Prince of Jordan also. And so for me to get a visa to come to America was amazing to me. And I, I didn't understand miracles at the time at the time, but when I 
after I got saved, I realized that was a miracle that I was able to get a visa. So I came to America in 1974. Uh, I didn't know why I was coming to America because I hated Americans and America just as much as I hated Israel and the Jews. But I was drawn to come to see my friend there in, 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 uh, in, in a city called Colombia. And, and then I was going to go to France to continue my studies. But when I came to America and I began to communicate with Americans and realized American people really treated me very kindly and accepted me. And, and I didn't see any of that animosity from them. And I thought maybe I need to look deeper into this, into this American people. And uh, the more I studied, the more I learned about the Americans and the more I decided I want to live in this country. And so I asked my friends, what would be the best way to stay in America? They said to marry an American girl. I said, well, that is not a problem. So I went hunting for American girl. I went to a city called Kansas City, Missouri. And I went to a nightclub that day. And as I walked in, my eyes zoomed to what is my today my wife, Karen. And I went to her. I had a friend with me. And I went to her. And I asked her for a dance. And she said, no. I went back to her the second time. She said, no, again. I thought this girl must be blind or something. I'll go and get, find another girl. So I went back to my table. My friend challenged me. And he said, I bet you'll never get her. I said, you're on. So I went back to him, to her. And this, I didn't speak English. I spoke very little English at the time. So I went to her and I was on my knees almost by her table asking her to dance with me. She looked at me and I could tell she felt sorry for me. So <clears throat> she came and danced with me and I got her phone number and I started calling her every day. For the next three days, I would call her and she would talk and talk and talk for hours. And I did not understand 95% of what she was saying. Just saying, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And the last day, the third day, I thought this is, uh, it's got it's to gotta hurt to stop. So I, I had a friend write it on my hand and I, I proposed to her. I said, please marry me. She was quiet. I said, please marry me. She said, man, you're crazy. I just met you three days ago. I said, it's okay, it's okay, marry me. Of course, she didn't agree, but I didn't give up. I kept after her until by October of 1974, we get married. Now, <clears throat> when I married Karen, and I shared with my father and my family back in Qatar, and he was so mad at me, I was engaged to my cousin also. And he was so mad at me, he said, okay, you marry American girl, no more money from me. You go feed your American wife. I was stuck. I spoke very little English. I have no skills other than weapons and explosives. And, and uh, I found a job working at a, as a dishwasher at a French restaurant. And I started working there. You know, friends, I just want to share with you something before I go further in the testimony. Uh, there are no coincidences in our life. As followers of Jesus, there is no coincidence. We always, God have a plan in our life. Having coming to America, all the way to America, not really wanting to stay, and then find a way to stay, and 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 now getting a job, and I work at a dishwasher. I worked very hard. The owner, a French couple, liked me very much. They started promoting me. Within six months, they asked me if I wanted to learn how to serve in the dining room. Now, if any of you know anything about the Middle East, <clears throat> working in a restaurant business 
is a very shameful business. And, and for me, if ha coming from a very affluent family, uh, it, it was even harder. You know, I've shamed my dad by marrying an American girl. Now I'm shaming him more by working in a restaurant. And I, I was offered to work in the dining room. Now I was very nervous. I went to my first customer in the dining. When I walked into the dining room, it's so fancy. This was a, a two and a half Michelin star restaurant. It was so fancy and I was so nervous, so intimidated. I went to my first customer to take his dirty dishes away. And I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. The man sitting at the table looked at me with such a beautiful smile and he said, thank you, young man. That thank you captured my heart and really gave me, gave me comfort. And I made a decision in my mind at that moment, I'm gonna take good care of this man every time he comes to eat in the restaurant. I didn't know who he was. All the thing, all that I know that moment is he was so kind to me. So that began a relationship with Charlie in, in, in ways that intrigued me so much. I didn't understand why this rich man would thank his, his servant. But yet it was comforting to me and that began a relationship. And I worked very hard and grew very fast in that restaurant. I, I become the manager of the restaurant within two years. Now this is a two and a half Michelin star. In America, it was five star restaurant. And, and for me to be the manager of that very affluent restaurant was very uh, surprising to me, but the owners liked me very much, a French couple. And Charlie was amazed. This is a foreign boy, barely spoke English, now managing one of the top restaurants in America. And, and so he, he must have thought there is something about me, which I didn't know. Anyway, I worked very hard and continued to grow quickly in the restaurant. And I started studying hotel management. And I took uh, uh, correspondence courses with Cornell University for uh, hotel and restaurant management. And I got a job and started working in the hotel industry and for 19 years between California and Kansas City, and 19 years later, the owners, the couple that owned the French restaurant decided to sell it to us. I was in California at the time, and in, in, in uh, Sanctuary City. So I came back to buy the restaurant and uh, I was looking to move the restaurant from the location that it was in to a new building. Now, Charlie uh, still connected with me all these years, he still con call me and sometimes he will come to visit with me. And uh, <clears throat> he came mid-February of 1993, I was at the restaurant, he came and he's so excited to tell me about a building that I should go to look at. Same building I went to about three days before. This building used to be an old funeral home that went out of business. A real estate agent told me about it and I went there. And when I walked in there and, and uh, I felt, you know, as a Muslim, uh, we're told that if you go into places where it had dead people in it, there's demons and ghosts. And so when I walked in there, I felt demons and ghosts all over the place. I ran out of there. So Charlie was telling me about this space, same location. And I said, Charlie, I was there just three days ago. And man, when I walked in there, I felt demons all over the place and I ran out of there. He laughed at me and for the first time in 19 years, he brings up the subject of God. He said, Taz, do you know why you were scared like that? I said, no, why? He said, because you don't have the fear of God in you. I was shocked. I said, Charlie, what are you talking about? I'm a Muslim. I fear God. He said, no, you don't. But he said, not to worry. I can help you with that. I can fix it. And with such a confidence, he points his finger to the sky and said, I have connection. 